and one, two, three, clap. Okay, one, two, three. Yeah, that's, they should have picked that up. Was it supposed yeah. to be together, though? It doesn't, no, because, you, like, I'll just, you'll just sync my clap to your clap, mm-hmm. and they will have, yeah, it was supposed to be at the same time. Yeah. Okay. I think they were pretty close. We can do it one more time if you want. I don't think, it, I don't think, I think we'll be okay. All right, cool, cool. All right, how's it going, everybody? It is Tuesday, April 21st, and we are here at a regular episode of The Sit Down. And back is a friend of the show, Dylan Palladino. How's it going? That's right, man. How you doing? Another another Tuesday. Uh, yeah. 421. Dude. Yep, and Dylan is live at his mommy's house <laughs> in his race car bed <laughs> in his childhood bedroom eating yeah, dinosaur been, chicken nuggets <laughs> I've been, I've been jacking and pizza off my bagel race car bites. Bed every day. <laughs> Your yeah, mom just comes in like Marge bites. Simpson with a with a pitcher of like juice for you, <laughs> and she hears me and she just walks out. <laughs> oh, oh, honey, I'm so sorry. Oh, I didn't so realize you're doing you're doing your thing, and I'm like, yes, yeah. mom, I'm doing my thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's yeah. adorable. Well, wherever you are, guys, we hope you're <laughs> quarantined in a safe spot. Uh, also, I just want to say real quick, if you can, I'm doing a daily show on Patreon every single day. So get over there. It's five dollars a month. You get a show every day, six days a week. Every and uh, day. we got some good guests. Yeah, I mean, it's not a good show. I mean, no, it's a good show. I mean, it's like, you know, whatever. It's a daily show. It's, it's like good. whatever. Yeah, but yeah, it's good. we've it's had good guests. We've had we've had Will Menegro on. We've had Stavros. We've had uh, we got some good guests lined up. We got we're talking to Jared Freed uh, tomorrow. And it's only Who else do we minutes, have? Right? Annie Letterman. It, yeah, it's 30 minutes, 20 to 30 minutes every day. The, and what is when it? I, the pitch, ones pitch that I phone in it. are 20 minutes? What's that? <laughs> I mean, it's me just like it. a it's just like as long as there's quarantine, we're going to be doing the, the show. And what are you just talking about? So check that out. What we talk about anything. We're not okay. beholden to some shitty, uh, you know, topic. Oh, good. Yeah, dude. I saw the lamest. Uh, I saw m- maybe the lamest take I've seen today on Twitter about quarantine. Oh, what was it? And I'm gonna read the tweet. It's a the guy's a friend of mine. Okay. You know, and he's like nice. a nice guy and everything. But I, I'm gonna just. It's so. It's so funny that you would think to tweet this. Yeah, super, I've, I don't know it, about you. I've like not had anything any ideas to tweet about shit because nothing's happening you know the first yeah the first week it was but but now this is just like this is ridiculous like it feels silly to me to like post you know like my home workout or something although i did build myself a pull-up bar and i put some rings in and i just had a great workout before we started recording you should send me a picture of the pull-up bar i want to see your your good work sweet yeah, I will. Okay, I can't find. <laughs> oh, wait, I Twitter doesn't open on my computer for some reason. But let me just let me open it up on my phone. On your phone, wow, very. Um, you're very prepared. It's just a very funny. So this guy obviously like got out of New York, right? And I guess a lot of people are, um, uh, saying like like my friend Selena Kopic, who is a big Hillary person, but she's a uh-huh. comic, but she had some tweet about like. They say it takes ten years to be a New Yorker, but if you if you went to your parents' house for COVID, your clock starts again when you when you get back. Oh, uh, shut the fuck! I thought up. that was like a funny, yeah. But that was like a funny. I mean, I thought that was kind of funny. But anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah okay. So this guy, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> this is truly in it. This is it, it's it's surprising when when people have a take that's this shitty. When someone that you generally like has a take that's this shitty. Yeah. But uh. <laughs> My fiance was on her way to class one morning and saw a plane hit the World Trade Center and then kept living in NYC for 19 years. Too bad she's not a real New Yorker because she didn't want to stay and now one of her, and stay and kill one of our neighbors every time she went out to buy a can of soup. And then it's like a thread. If you're tweeting generalizations about people who left NYC, please include your apartment's floor plan and whether or not you have an outdoor space in unit laundry. Okay, I do have a nice apartment right now. Uh, yeah, it's pretty nice. And I do have an outdoor space. So it's like, you have in, okay, fine. Do you have in-unit laundry? The square footage? I don't have in-unit laundry. I have to go. No, I got to go to the yeah, laundry. Yeah, what's the square footage? I have a, I have a dishwasher. Spot. Honey, what's our square footage? I don't know, but it's probably like, if I had to guess, I would say like, mm, yeah, 1,400. Yeah, it's, you got a pretty it's good decent spot. Size. You it's like decent size. You've got like a TV room. You've got a kitchen. Then you've got the room you're in and your room that you... You know, have sex with your fiance in. Yeah, twice a week. 
Okay, that's so. When it first started, did it yeah. ramp up a lot, or did it stay normal? Because you guys are in your thirties. I feel like people in their thirties. When what first a started? Relationship? Like yeah. when when coronavirus first started, where you're like, babe, it's time to fucking go to Slam Town, or. Um, I didn't use those words exactly, <laughs> but uh. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it, but no, it didn't. It did. It, it, yeah, it probably went a little more yeah, than peak, usual, but you went yeah, but it's not like it's not like it's all the time or anything. I mean, yeah, we're in our thirties, yeah. and we're both sick of each other. Yeah, damn. Um, but 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 I am in probably a better situation than like most most people. Most people I mean, who definitely most single them. guys. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah. I mean, dude, if I was in New York, I would be. I'd be probably trying to meet up with someone. A comic actually hit me up on a dating app, and if I yeah. go back to New York, maybe I'll I'll hook up with her. Can you know. text text me who it is? Yeah, I'll text you right now. I think I nice. think you've talked I think you've talked to me about it. Okay. But, um, I, but the thing is, she so she matched with me, but said like LOL. So the question is, like, do you think she's still I don't know looking who that down? Is. Yeah, you do. Really? I mean, that's she's not, not a, that's not a name. All right, fine, whatever. Yeah. That is it. That, that is a oh, name. Oh, I think I know. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, Does her no, last no. name start with a G? Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I know who that yeah, is. Yeah. All right, good for you. Um, <laughs> I just can't believe how how like how like openly horny some of these women are being. It's <laughs> you sound usually, like such an old Italian <laughs> fuck and you have your wife beat her in your gold chain on. I can't I can't I just can't understand how fucking no, but usually, horny all these broads have been well usually it's it's dudes being publicly horny but now like you just well like, we know one girl on Twitter who t- tweets about it 13 times a day yeah masturbating yeah um yeah. where it's like okay we get it you know but then also just people who are like pretty respectable who are just like like nice you know, they're like, yeah. I'm going to do, I'm going to get on <laughs> everybody's, I don't know. It's a great time to be a guy, I guess. Yeah, but you can't do anything. Like, do, okay, so I, if if I was in New York, I mm-hmm. was thinking I would potentially meet someone off of the dating apps. Yeah. Do you think that's wrong? What do you think? Um, if you're not seeing any old you're people. Not, yeah, I guess you're not really supposed to break quarantine. I guess the way to do it would be to like you meet somebody and then if you want to meet up with someone you like mm-hmm. but then it's like riding the subway that's you know that's kind of well, dangerous you don't ride the subway dude you pay for a fucking uber you know right so you're in a small you're in a small <laughs> box with a, another person okay so i'd have to fuck someone who's on the island i couldn't you have to bike you have to bike there you got to bike yeah. to her place or walk I would, there i mean I like i would walk how far would you walk for pussy if you were like a single guy Wow, um, and, but so but but then it's like it's a girl that you don't really know that well. And you're sh- you're you're shacking up with her. Um, okay, well, what, what? Let's see. I'd say you can probably walk four mi- five miles in an hour, right? You could probably yeah. walk five miles in an hour. Um, it takes about a half hour to walk two miles. So yeah, yeah. So f- so I I I'd probably pick up the pace a little bit. I could probably walk five. Yeah, you miles can make a workout out. You could do like a cardio workout. Yeah, you could you know. I guess do, so. I guess. It, Maybe, fuck. Would you walk? Because I seven could, miles. The most I've seven. Wow. But I mean, like, it, it for for this quarantine, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. But the most normally, I've walked is like th- I think three and a half miles during Hurricane Sandy. I walked to work, and but th- it wasn't that bad. It was like an hour walk. Yeah, it's not horrible. Yeah, I mean, I just think you know. Also, if I'm walking to to bang like i'm gonna want to fuck a couple times you know what i mean like get my mm-hmm. get my calories worth you know yeah yeah that was just such an insane take about 9-11 being like she <laughs> stayed after 9-11 9-11 was fucking one and done i mean that that 9-11 was not those guys were never gonna 9-11 again that was like yeah, for sure that, and also i mean like, that was everything was still open yeah that was it like a led zeppelin a reunion comparison. tour or something yeah yeah <laughs> It's also just right. Uh, it just don't write that, and also like, who you know what? Who gives a fuck both ways? Yeah. Just either leave New York and say I don't give a shit, like and I do, and shut up about it. Yeah, yeah, or stay in New York and then make fun of people for the first two weeks, and then realize that you're just as unoriginal as everyone else, and then yeah. just shut the fuck up. You know. Well, Stavros Stavros owns a house in Baltimore, and he stayed. Oh, really? 
Yeah. Well, I mean, why? But also, like, I don't want to go to Baltimore, unless yeah. it's outside of Baltimore. That could be kind of nice. Yeah. You know. Yeah. 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 yeah maybe you guys. Maybe you. Sh- maybe you should have went to Baltimore. Yeah. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah. Um, bad take. Bad take. Bad take. It's pretty funny though. How you feeling? Uh, I'm feeling good. I got a, had a good? great workout. I put a I put a pull up bar in, and then I added some support beams a couple days ago, and then I put I got gymnastic Cause just, rings. Because you're just going ham. Oh, you got gymnastic rings. Yeah, oh, I mean body weight training is is tough. It's not like lifting weights where you know you can just like pick up the weight and lift more weight. It's like you're really figuring out like how where to position moves. yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, how it moves. Where to position yourself. And you know with pull ups like pull ups are, are a great exercise, but you kind of feel like you're like, what am you, sometimes you're like, what am I doing here? Because you can go to failure, but then you're like, how's my range of motion? Like it requires a lot yeah, more thought, yeah. Yeah, you, you know, might body be weight training. The wrong, the wrong muscles. And you might, yeah. yeah. They yeah. say it takes way more um, practice to do body. Like it takes what body weight training is the easiest because there's no equipment, but it takes a lot more training. So, yeah, I think it's more of a I'm neurological to load too because yeah. you, um, because you have to focus on everything that's engaging while you're doing it, you yeah. know. But and yeah. I know all your fans love fitness talk, so because they're all fucking hot and in shape. Um, I think a lot, a good amount are. Yeah. What would you say? My audience, my audience is like hot dads. It's like good. Is in, it really? You know? It's a lot of dads. Yeah, I think so. Well, yeah. One of our yeah, one of our listeners had a had, uh, had a baby. Is having a baby or had a baby? Shout oh, out to Devin. Good, shout out to Devin. Good for you, dude. This is the, I mean, imagine having a baby right now. That would suck. Um. Yeah, but you get to be home with it. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah. When I first I got my dog, it was awesome because we just hung out and I, I played Far Cry and he sat on my lap. <laughs> I just stayed up all night and I had an excuse. Because you had to watch the dog? Yeah. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, that's a, that's, a pretty, that's a pretty good excuse. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. You think you're going to have kids? I think we've talked about this. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, you'll be a good. I don't dad. want any, but I will. Yeah, I think I, I think I would. I, I just want to be a better father than my dad was. You'll be a good dad. You'll um, I'm trying to imagine what you'd be like. Oh my God, there's a giant fucking cockroach in here. Holy shit. Oh my God, call your mom, dude. Oh, dude, this thing. Oh, oh, it just jumped on the bed. Oh. Oh no, are you gonna be? Are you Fuck. gonna be okay? Dude, are you okay? Fuck off. This thing is huge. Look Jeez. how big this thing is. <laughs> Hold on, how do you I better you better call nine one one. Look how big this thing is. Yeah, it's big, but hold on. I gotta, yeah, I gotta... okay, it's big. Take a picture of it because I'm gonna put it on Patreon. I uh, no, I just I just captured it in uh I've in this box, <laughs> so I'll 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 deal with it after. It's you not gonna hurt I... you though. No, I dude, I know it's not gonna hurt me. I just you know people have irrational fears of certain things. A cockroach is one of yours. With fucking roaches. I don't have a fear of them. They just gross me the fuck out. Yeah. You know? But they're dry. Anyway, guys, that... What do you they're, mean dry, they're dry, though. What? But bugs are dry. What? Worms are weirder than bugs. They're, I've never, ever thought about a bug being hot. I mean, hot, Jesus. About a bug <laughs> being wet or dry. How... What the fuck? They're dry? Yeah, they're dry. They're not going to leave slime on your hands. I mean, okay, but like they could like pee piss on you or some shit, right? Or, mm, I don't I know. Worms don't gross me out. Do, wor- do worms gross you out? Bug bug shit is like it's like a baby booger. You just wipe it off. It's disgusting. Um It's nothing. Dude, have you seen those things that parents will stick up their baby's noses to to get all the like the nasal thing? boogers out and they have to yeah. suck. Yeah. Yeah. It's really gross. But um, it, it doesn't go in their mouth, but it's still pretty pretty nasty that they do that. Yeah, I don't know. I guess I would do that for my son. Anyway, yeah. I got the roach, guys, for everyone listening. Um, Sweet. All right, cool. So let's go for it. One thing we were thinking about. Okay, so that's the intro to the show. So one thing I was thinking about was uh you know, the first week of this was fun, right? It was like it was like you're settling in. It's like a different life. You go, oh, okay, I can't do anything. Okay, cool. I don't have to go out. I don't have to leave the house. I left the house today, and I just I just like took my dog to the park, and I was driving around Queens, 
And uh, yeah. I'm just looking at all the businesses that are closed, like, you know, the bodegas and the dry cleaners and stuff like that. I'm just thinking about, like, you know, just sort of the hustle bustle of, of everyday life in New York, the traffic and the the stress and the crowdedness. And, and I was like, it, I don't mm-hmm. I don't miss I don't miss it. Oh, you don't? You know? I do. I don't. Really? Yeah, so much. I don't miss this rat race, and I don't miss crowded delis and people on the tons of people on the subway, and just we all—it all seems like we're going, you know, we're going nowhere. And I just hope that when this is over, people can take a little bit of, of quarantine with them. You know, it's like Christmas; you got to keep it in your heart. What do you? So, but what? Okay, what are the takeaways going to be for you from quarantine? Just like slowing down a little bit enjoying your life going to the park working out you know but see but for me it's less like pressure i'm not getting i'm not slowing down because i feel this weird pressure that like i have to stay inside i don't know yeah. that's my like my anxiety is still i like is still kind of there you know mm-hmm. and your old I've generation won- of comics you guys think it's so interesting to talk about your anxiety bro i don't yeah see I, that's why i didn't even want to say anxiety because <laughs> people have fucking used it so much it's pretty oh, hack so right of these, of these pussies yeah but yeah. it's not me being like oh i'm anxious i can't do anything no but it's like dude i'm literally like oh like what the f-? like because i'm so used to new york i'm like i want to be doing more shit i mean trust me it's great when this yeah. first started the first week i was like i'm going to play video games i'm just going i'm just going to chill out but now i'm like dude i need to read a book and like yeah. do, i don't know i like make videos for online I, as a comic and stuff i'm like i guess i should be making more content but then yeah. whenever i feel like i should be doing something it completely kills like you know like you know it kills the creative boner in my in my head like you know yeah. i don't want to do it anymore it's like when a girl says, why aren't you hard? And then you lose it. You know what I mean? Because that happens to you a lot, doesn't it? It happens no, to you too, buddy. No, I'm, I'm kidding. It happens to me. You act you. like you're the only one. I mean, it happens to a lot of guys. Let's, I mean, I could I could go down the list. <laughs> I've got a list right here, actually. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think maybe people should. No, I can get hard. I just do. It does. <laughs> It, but it does get to the point where, like, if I get a if I get an erection and I don't and I can't use it, I get bummed out. Oh, I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're like, what it's like, like a full it's like a full moon or something. You're like, I did all this and I'm not going to be able to. Yeah, yeah. I. Um, it's like a beautiful spring night, but you have to work or whatever. I don't know. I just hope that I can take a little piece of because I just like. I mean, for the past, you know, 10 years, I've just felt like, you know, between the hours of like seven o'clock and 11 every single night, I'm like, what am I doing? What am I doing? And I just I just put this immense amount of pressure on myself. And I just yeah, I hope I can take a little bit of this because I'm still doing a lot. But I hope I can take this like slower pace of life and just bring it back to, I think you know, maybe normal what it'll life. be is when you're in normal life, you'll be like. At least I'm not in It's like quarantine. a tortoise in the hair thing. Yeah, yeah, but it's like a tortoise in the hair thing. I know, but I want to stay in quarantine. I like having the excuse to not have to do anything. Yeah, see, but then you can just... But it's more adult to just be like, I'm not going to go out because I choose to not go out, you know? Mm-hmm. But when you're a comic, you have to go out every night. Okay, the last thing I want to do is talk about comedy. <laughs> um, But... All right. Yeah, no, so, I, I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. Dude, everybody only wants to talk about comedy. It makes me fucking sick. You mean on podcast? Like I start, yeah. Yeah, dude, it's like so I, annoying. Like I'll, start, like I'll start talking to somebody. I'll be like, oh, what are you doing? And they'll be like, oh, you know, I'm not doing as many. Yeah, I'm not doing as many open. And they talk about. They start talking about like their career. It makes me fucking sick. Yeah, yeah. I, I think I fall into that with a lot of people because when people go, what's going on? Yeah. It feels like you're asking... Like, how's your career? But, yeah, yeah, with any comic, like, the last thing I want to talk about Sometimes is... it's all comics tweet about, too. Like, they'll be like, oh, yeah, uh, can't wait for my stimulus that I get in drink tickets. And it's like, literally, no one knows what the fuck you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. No, like, n- nor the do they care. Up, yeah. They don't give a shit. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's like people that just, yeah, <sighs> people that just talk about comedy or, like, just only about dating. It's like, all right, dude, you're a, f- you're a, you're a fucking failure. You know? Yeah. 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 Just drink your wine. Ma- you know, make some pasta like you do. I'm dying. I'm dying to make pasta. Why haven't you been? Um, just the time. I don't know. The, d- the days go by really fast. Like, like I'll wake they up do. 
Yeah. And I'll think about and and it's weird. You don't you wouldn't think that they do, but they do. And they like I I wake up and I'll think about working out for an hour and a half. Then I'll do like a thirty minute workout. And then I'll go, man, I should really work out again. So I think about it for another hour and a half, and then I do a 20-minute workout. Um, but, yeah. You don't need to work out for that long. You know dude. what's Just sick, though? What? But a ton of people are, like, a ton of people on YouTube are, like, building. They're building squat racks out of wood. They're fi- they're doing home workouts. They're doing body weight stuff. That's cool. Squat I hope that this is the end of. Cool. Yeah, I hope this is the end of gyms, which are a fucking criminal organization. I love gyms, dude. <laughs> I do too, but I want to. I just want to say fuck you to World Gym of Ridgewood, who charged me a twenty dollars <laughs> late fee when my when my card didn't go through because I had to cancel it. Yeah, fuck my them. bank issued me a new card, and they and they charged me twenty dollars twenty dollars late fee. You're a bunch of fucking scumbags, and you do business <laughs> like scumbags, and you're gonna lo- you're losing a customer, and it's a shame because it was a great gym. Yeah, fuck. Anyway. Them. All right. So what did we say this episode was going to be about? We were saying that you know first week of quarantine. It's great. It's fun. You go great. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna. Here's my. I. I. am downloading the the Criterion app. Here's all the movies I want to watch, and then. Uh, What's the Criterion app? My my brother has it. It's only on Roku, but it's got all the Criterion movies. So like all the, you know, all the like foreign art house movies that you've always wanted to watch. They're all on there. Uh, I've never heard of. Yeah. Okay. Well, I guess I'll you ever see like, on Roku. like there's a movie called uh, the Battle of Algiers that I've been dying to watch. Okay. The problem is Deb and I have very different taste in movies, and I actually do kind of like, like I like, I don't know, I kind of like, I got a soft spot for like kind of artsy movies. Really? I w- I like I like Noah Baumbach, and I like, I so. you know, I like Woody, Woody Allen, The King. You, but you like Woody, do you, like, you, see, you see Woody Allen movies? I've never seen a Woody Allen movie. You've never seen a Woody Allen movie? No. You got to watch, know, you got to watch one just to know what. Watch watch Manhattan or Annie Hall. I think Manhattan's on Netflix. Okay. Just start watching it. Manhattan's funny because the beginning of the movie, it's it, it starts off where it's about him fucking a 17-year-old. That's like the opening scene with really? it. Yeah, it's 42-year-old Woody Allen and his 17-year-old girlfriend. Oh, that's really uncomfortable. I guess it's legal, yeah. but, you know. Well, it's legal in Jersey, not in New York. He's like, eh, you know, I'm older than her father. Um, that's so gross. Why... I don't know. Why I know, but you know, but I, but okay. you know what? You know what? It's a great movie because Diane Keaton's in it, and she plays this like really like annoying, obnoxious bitch that he uh, like falls in love with. Oh, nice! And it's about so it's about like falling in love with somebody that you know is like you hate. Yeah, that yeah, you hate. She's just like a snotty. Yeah. Anyway, I mean, look, the look. He's Woody Allen for a reason, you know, but uh, <laughs> we can't enjoy his stuff anymore because he's a pedophile. All right. So 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 what so I was yeah, thinking first was week happens. You do all this and then it starts yeah. to really settle in that. Like, yeah, this this ain't going to end anytime soon. Right. And now it just feels silly to be like, hey, guys, check out my body weight workout. Like that was cool the first week to be like, here's here's a bu- here's a ways you can vary your, your push ups. But now it's just like. Man, people are fucking starving to death. <laughs> no, it also feels like now it, it shouldn't be like, like now, it's so weird, dude. Now, if you're like trying to sell something online that's not mm-hmm. really usable, like mm-hmm. you fucking suck, you know? Yeah. Like before, yeah. it's like, oh, like what? get get my fit tea or oh, subscribe to like whatever, you know? But now yeah. it's like, unless you're providing food sex yeah. on an only fans or something yeah. really useful like yeah. supporting supporting my artwork is like kind of it's like for a lot of people that are bullshit it's like no dude not now like, yeah unless you're really helping me to forget about um what's going on with this life i kind of mm. feel like you know Someone should just start a podcast where they just scream for two minutes, mm. and then that's mm-hmm. it, and then everyone will listen to it and just feel better. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like a Yoko Ono podcast. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> My guest today is Yoko Ono. It's just like, <laughs> You're like that was yeah. good. That felt good. That's cathartic. Yep. Yeah. Um, but I was thinking, I wonder if people do that when they get to jail. You know, if you're doing like a long prison sentence, you like settle in. You're like, okay. All right, I got a bed. I got there's bars right here. Yep. I can make yeah, moonshine yeah. in the toilet. This isn't so bad. You know, yeah, you I start can... like you like rationalize it. 
yeah, I'm going to get prison ripped. You know, I'll make some friends. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's so many books in the library that I can probably read. Yeah. Uh, Speaking of getting ripped, I just feel like when this is over, I am going to be ripped, but I'm going to be like really depressed. And I'm just going to be like, I'm going to be at my grandmother's funeral, just like, <laughs> and my neck is going to rip my fucking collar. <laughs> and I'll yeah. be like, what was it all for? <laughs> like, Cause I like, like you're crying and then when you cough, yeah, it rips that your tie just explodes. Yeah. I took testosterone supplements, which are like made my dick small for some reason. <laughs> But my neck is huge. Like, Your neck is oh giant, f- dude. Yeah, I, I have to go to my grandmother's Zoom funeral. Oh, yeah. Well, a lot of people are getting it from funerals, which is kind of... Well, not a lot of people I've heard are they? happening. Are yeah. Well, some funeral, funerals are like a hotbed for it in certain instances because it's the only time a bunch of people are getting together and a bunch of immunocompromised people. Yeah. Like, because it's old people. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I feel like... When I first went to went to jail, I think I think maybe like this. When you first went to jail? Like if I fir- like if I first went to jail, like like if yeah. I, let's say I'm going to jail, like when yeah. I first went, um I think for the first couple of days to a week, it would be this kind of twilight, like you wouldn't believe it would be surreal, you know. Mm-hmm. Kind of like yeah. how this quarantine was, where you're like, "Oh, we're all joking about it. Like, who knows how long this is gonna last? Um, yeah. Like, I don't know. This doesn't really feel real. And it's just like, it's nice to right. be out of it all for a week. And then all of a sudden, you'd be like, "Okay, what the f- like? What am I actually gonna do? Am I just gonna like? Am I gonna learn how to make a shiv? Yeah. Like, what gang am I gonna join? Am I gonna yeah, befriend? Yeah. yeah. The uh, what are they called? The guards." I don't know, but I was thinking about a movie where, like, it's a movie about, like, a white-collar criminal goes to jail, but his lawyer works at a deal where, like, he gets to go to women's prison. (laughs) So he still he's, like, still has to go to... He, like, killed a family with his car, so he still has to go to maximum (laughs) security prison, but it's maximum security women's prison. Was he drunk, or was he sleep-deprived, or was he, like, coked up? He just... He did did something... He did something bad, or he, like, stole... No, I'm saying, with the car, was he, like, was he on drugs? Was he drunk? Was yeah, he, he was like on mistress? drugs and drunk. So it's so it's like he can't he can't get like a he can't go to like white collar prison because the crime that he did was like somewhat violent or something bad happened. Like somebody yeah, so died. Like, so he was leaving his mistress's house and then yeah. on the way he killed like a family of like a, a fresh family of immigrants who just got there and like yeah like, you know we're waiting for at the bus stop because it was early morning. Right, like the yeah. whole family, the the whole family just got <laughs> hired at at a Taco Bell, and they were they were celebrating. <laughs> the, the mom, the dad, and the kids, <laughs> they and they were so happy to have their first job, and uh, yeah, <laughs> so stupid. Um, yeah, okay, so that happened. So yeah, so he can't go to white collar prison, but his lawyer works. He's got a very good lawyer, mm-hmm. so he works at a deal where he gets to go to women's prison. Yeah, yeah. It's like now he's going to women's, but he somehow gets raped more in women's prison. Yeah. It's just, he's just no, he would get he's just fucked getting, up in women's prison, dude. Yeah, he's just getting held down and pegged, and then yeah, they're like, he, you know, he would get, they're like well, they would take all their anger out on all men on him. Yeah, you remember that wrestler Rikishi? No, I never watched wrestling, but I'll oh, I'll, I'll humor you and keep going. Rikishi was like a Hawaiian guy, and his his finisher move was called the stink face, and he would like rub his ass in your face. Oh God! So just a giant Hawaiian woman like rubbing her pussy in this guy's <laughs> face. I don't know what the I don't know what his arc is like where the movie goes. I just yeah. I just have it. I only yeah. have it written. Yeah, you know, uh, to that like, point. What happens after that? Like, how does he redeem? I don't himself? know. Like, uh, does he? Yeah. Does he learn? Yeah, I don't know what. I, like, does he write a book about how to? I don't know. He teaches yeah, the women. I, I he teaches all the women how to like stand up to their abusive boyfriend. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know what is. Yeah, what would happen? I I have no idea. Or maybe, maybe, um, okay. Maybe the women's jail has to fight the men's jail. Not fight, like mm. has to, has to. A, a canoe, a canoe competition <laughs> or something. They, so no, he, they have to compete, like in baseball or something, right? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. So he teaches them how to cheat. So we teach. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Or I could say he would teach them how to be really good at like, sh- because the guys like he like he's gonna just make them yeah how to cheat and like he knows all the tricks the guys are gonna use maybe I don't fucking know but somehow yeah. the women's team defeats the the men's team, you know. Yeah. 
Yeah. And yeah, that 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 could be kind of okay. Fucking yeah. Um, maybe. Um. Who knows? All right. So so today's episode is going to be about like. All right. So it's going to be about prison. Prison survival. Okay. Prison survival. Yeah. So, real quick. Give me, give me your with 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 however information, however much information you, you have in your head. Out. However much, can you hear me now? And we're back, Dylan. Yeah, I'm here. All right, cool. So I don't know what happened with my um with my computer. I guess I lost my internet connection, but we're gonna finish this over the phone. All right. So my question to you is, uh-huh. okay, give me your give me your like from from whatever amount of information that you have, give me like your prison survival strategy. Okay, so I'm allowed to read up before I go to prison, right? You're yeah. allowed to read up? Like read up on all the gangs and do as much research as I can, right? Like obviously um, sure. I'm, I'm going to do that. So cuz I'm not it's not like I'm going to prison like the next day I get indicted yeah. and then I have like two weeks before. So I think yeah. first I, I, I probably should. Let me ask real quick. Did you ever see that movie? There was a movie that came out in 2009. It's called a prophet. Uh, no. Well, like it's about a guy who goes to prison and then, so he like falls in with these, uh, Corsican gangsters in prison and they, uh, they want him to kill somebody. Uh-huh. So they're like, so they're like, go to this guy's cell and make him think that you're going to suck his dick, <laughs> but hide a razor blade in your mouth and then slit his throat with a razor blade. Oh, my God. So he like, yeah. So he like, yeah. And that's that's as far as I got in the movie. I never I never finished. And this was like 10 years ago. I mean, it's like a 10 year old movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just never finished the movie. Yeah, I don't But really that's all I remember about that. it. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> it's just funny to like. <laughs> Imagine like you ch- you chicken out and you're just you sucking a guy's dick with a razor <laughs> with a razor blade in your mouth. Oh god. How do they <laughs> hold the razor blades in their mouth without like that's got to be a skill that's learned, you know? Yeah, well you just keep it in your I mean you could keep a razor blade in there but like but you could do it if you tongue, don't have to suck right? a dick. Yeah, you have to like <laughs> not your tongue or is it on the side of your molar, you know? It's probably on the side of your molar. Yeah, and you you just got to keep it from moving, so you yeah. just can't like you know, you got to stay tight lipped. But you know, it's just tough. The, the I mean, the hardest part is getting it out of your mouth. So you can slit the guy's throat. Yeah, but they said that you know, in the article I was reading, it said that people like it would be a a point of pride, not a point of pride, but like it would be a skill that could spit it out so quickly. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. In the Atlantic article, um. So I think the first thing I would do is honestly, if I knew I was going to be there for a long time and I knew that I was going to have to put shit up my ass, I would mm-hmm. probably start preparing my asshole. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, like, like that's the first th- that's the first thing you did. <laughs> that's not the first thing I do, dude, but you got to like you you got to prepare it, dude. <laughs> like, yo, they talk about shoving phones up there, <laughs> knives, like dude, you got to you you got to get it ready, and then I, I would also be investigating whether whether or not I was. Some a, guys like, are like, I'm gonna read up on gangs. I'm gonna learn some karate. I'm gonna learn some basic self defense. And you're like, I'm gonna stretch out my asshole. <laughs> <laughs> Look, <laughs> you're just you're just being practical about this. <laughs> yeah, dude, I can't learn karate in two weeks. I mean, yes, yeah, that would, that would be one of the things I was doing. No, see, you're like you're like the Hillary Clinton of going to prison. You're like pragmatic. You're like, all right, what do we really need to do? No, I'm like, okay, yeah, that's I not would, gonna win you an election, but yeah. yeah, I would read, I would read up on the jit, I would read up on the gang, see the one that was most like like most likely to get into. Um, yeah, I would shave my head, uh, uh-huh. and I would get as you ripped. would shave your head. Yeah, just because I don't want someone to pull my hair. I don't know. I just feel like it's better to have a shaved head. Yeah, you know what I mean. It makes you more menacing too. I would, I would yeah. definitely keep the beard. I don't want to come in as like a, like a pretty boy. You know what I'm saying? I want to keep. I would grow out a beard. Um, uh huh. I would. So I would do all that. I would definitely train every day with someone either in. I would think I would train like maybe Krav Maga or some shit. Something that's gonna uh-huh. help me to disarm people. Yeah. When they yeah. inevitably try to shank me, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Or just like mm-hmm. fuck me up. Um, yeah. There was a documentary that I watched, and they they interviewed a guy who went to prison for like twenty six years, and he said that like he was dating a woman 
or no, he like met a woman who was like living with a guy and the guy was sexually abusing her. So he went over to the house to like get her stuff to help her like move out. He went over with another guy. They both had guns. This guy had a gun. This guy pulls out his gun and he goes, look, look, I shouldn't have done this. I'm not making any excuses, but <laughs> there is a tussle. He reached for his gun. The guy I was with reached for his gun. They started fighting on the floor. And I pulled out my gun and shot him point blank in the head. <laughs> so like he, he basically like describes. He basically tells a story that's like you're like, oh okay, oh you just got caught up, and then he like he shot a guy execution style. I mean, this guy sounded like kind of a piece of shit anyway. I mean, but dude, I don't know. But also like that's he feared for his life, you know? Yeah. No, that's what he said. He said fight or flight took over and he shot the guy in the head. I mean, who's who are we to judge? <laughs> Execution style. <laughs> that is that is what that is, really. Like he, he said he like he shot ass. at the guy. Yeah. The guy that they were, you know, he shot at the guy uh -huh. and then it sounded like he did it from a place of, you know, like fear. Yeah. Like boom, like you know, like he didn't have to do it and he did oh, it. Oh, like like he was preemptively Killing this dude, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Twenty six. Like he already, like he already wounded him or something. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, if you shoot a guy in the leg and then you go and then execute him, like that's that's yeah. pretty fucked. But there, there was another guy that they they interviewed in 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 the movie, and this shit was crazy because this guy was like, um, he was a black guy from L.A. I think, mm -hmm. and he didn't he didn't have any criminal record. Um, and he was like a young kid when he went away and something happened like somebody got killed in the street and then there was a witness that pinned the murder on him and the guy who was the witness yeah. was a brothel owner. His name was Johnny something. And they said in the documentary that he owns he owns a he owned a brothel called the brothel was called Johnny's House of Prostitution. <laughs> <laughs> so, and he what? was the only witness and they said that this guy Johnny was actually the murderer and he pinned it on he pinned it on this guy oh. but I just love that he's like all right we need yeah I mean we got a brothel here but we don't we don't need some you know trashy name yeah 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 we need it <laughs> we're gonna be very straight to the point about what this place does who the who the type of personnel should be coming in here and what our patrons want yeah right right how about Johnny's House of Prostitution? <laughs> it's so funny because I guess you can name your business anything you want. Because like there's a there's a restaurant in Harlem, like you know how some restaurants will be called like you know a taste of the Mediterranean or like a taste yeah. of Shanghai or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This restaurant is called a taste of seafood. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, dude, you <laughs> could like, name you could name your restaurant. Mike's House of Prostitution. <laughs> right, <laughs> and right. It was just right. a restaurant. Though. That would and then actually people are like, "What's be... this about?" Right, <laughs> right. And half, <laughs> and half of your customers leave really mad, but the other half are like, "All right, I am kind of hungry. I maybe I'll ha maybe I'll have some eggs." Yeah, 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 exactly. But that would be the move. Would be because it has that crazy name. People would come and be like, "What is it?" And then you would have to have bomb ass food that kept them there. And then the cops mm -hmm. would always be like randomly raiding you but they'd never find anything because with a name like that you can't be doing anything illegal you mm -hmm. know yeah yeah that's a pretty good yeah well, i mean you could name a restaurant we kill people you know and then that's a little like harsh though <laughs> yeah i mean <laughs> obviously <laughs> i'm spitballing okay we put like uh, i mean you would get i mean you <laughs> yeah imagine just moving to the suburbs and being like mike's house of prostitution and and you, and you just have like the best omelet in town yeah yeah <laughs> you make an amazing you they, just make people, it there's like a line people yeah. would call it like um like m hop you know what i mean like they wouldn't yeah. they wouldn't call it mike's right, house right, right. Of prostitution they would call it m hop right you know, right. Yeah. yeah. They'd, they'd be like, yeah, we're going to go over to M hop. And then no one, no one asks you for a restaurant. What? Yeah. The what it means, you know, uh -huh. no one, like right. no one gives a shit. What TC? What is it even like the best frozen yogurt? TCB, whatever the hell it is. Uh -huh. Like, you know, that frozen yogurt spot. No one knows what it's TCBY. For. Yeah. TCB. What is it? Yeah. What does it stand for? It's it definitely stands for something. But it, but like. Who gives a fuck? Because you're too busy stuffing your fat face with, you know, yogurt. And I, I, and, yeah. I and I, when I say you, I mean the royal you. TCBY. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Meaning. Uh, um, 
but yeah, this was like a crazy story. So like this 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 guy Reggie was just like a regular guy mm-hmm. who got convicted of murder. And the country's best yogurt. He spent. Oh really? Yeah. What a lame name for a yogurt store. Yeah, I know. Pretty stupid. Oliver, stop. Um, okay, so, uh, so but but so once this guy Reggie was in prison, uh-huh. they, so like prisoners make weapons out of anything. It's weird because I don't know how much. I guess prisoners aren't watched as much as they uh, as you think. Um, well, there's not that many, but correctional officers. You know there's I mean? not that many. There's so, yeah. about a there's about one officer for every hundred guys or something. Yeah, that's insane. Yeah. So so a lot of times I think what the guards do is like they sort of sow division and I think they keep it very like racially um segregated the like they keep that? I think they like stoke the fires. They want to keep the prisons. They don't want the like I'll put this with they don't want the entire prison to be friends with each other. Oh, they have to sow some might, division. Then they might turn yeah. on the CEO. They don't want it to be the entire, like all the inmates against the guards. Yeah, because they could very so they easily have to, kill all the guards. Yeah. Um. Yeah. But anyway, so so there was a story where so once Reggie went to prison, there was this guy. <laughs> so like prisoners make knives out of anything. They'll they'll like melt a toothbrush and then I guess shave it down or something. Um, but they found a knife and there was an inmate who wanted to, um, he want, he wanted Reggie to take responsibility, um, for the knife, for the knife, for the knife. And, uh, the guy's nickname, the guy's nickname in prison was the devil. (laughs) He was just known as the devil. (laughs) Oh my God. Yeah. Um, so Reggie refused to do it and the guy like cut his face. So shit, like he slashed his face. He slashed Reggie's face, yeah. Damn, Reggie. So Reggie was like, so Reggie was like, this guy's going to kill me. So Reggie, like, when they broke up the fight, mm-hmm. Reggie jumped over the, like, a guard and and stabbed him to death. Stabbed the devil to death? He, he killed the devil, yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. So I don't know how that played out, and I don't know what the rules are. I don't know what the rules are about killing the devil. I mean, there was probably, <laughs> I mean, who knows what this guy's reputation was? But like, they showed him in the documentary, and he looked he looked pretty uh pretty scary. I wonder, like, I mean, do you you must go to trial for that? Right? Yeah, I don't know. Or I don't know. I bet the CEOs could maybe. I don't know. What's crazy is though the guy so Reggie did Reggie did 15 years awaiting his trial cuz Sir- he didn't have the money to post bail. No, I'm sorry, not 15 15 months. 15 months awaiting his trial. Holy so he was in shit. county jail. He was in county jail for 15 months. Um Wow. Yeah, and then he was in he did 16 years in jail. So once they the thing is too, once there's evidence that maybe you're innocent or you're wrongfully convicted, they um yeah. They it takes years for them to like get you out. Why? So there's just it's just like a big process. There's all this red tape. I mean, they they said like in this documentary, they're like, there's nothing there's nothing human about there's no human element to the criminal justice system. Yeah. And it's like we think that it's uh we think that it's you know this that it makes sense. But it's not it's a very just and lawful, yeah, yeah. Damn, yeah, that's um. I don't know. I mean, what w- what would you do if you were going to jail what? in two weeks? Yeah, what would you do? I guess what I would do is like I would try not to join a neo-Nazi gang. <laughs> I maybe that's easier yeah, said than done, and maybe I'm being idealistic. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I hope there's a way to like go to prison and just not be a Nazi. Yeah, there's the Aryan um, Brotherhood, which is Nazis, yeah. and then there's the other one. I don't remember what they were called. Yeah. Um, I guess what I would do is like, I mean, day one you hear stories about like you know, oh, you got to find the biggest guy and like beat him up or something. I don't think um, that's true though. No, well, the guy who shot the guy in the head was like. You know, you might have someone who tries to take your care package or something. Uh You know, he's like, you have to stand up to him. Like, you can't let him take it because then everybody else will come, will like, you know, like your care package that your family sends you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, you have to fight back at least once or twice. 
Because if you don't, everyone else in the yard is going to be like, oh, that guy's an easy target. So yeah. even if he, so, so this guy was like, listen, even if you get your ass kicked, um, you still have to like fight back. So you might take a beating or two, but but you're not going to take more than a couple beatings. Um, you know, Fuck. yeah, but you don't want to you don't want to be the guy who just rolls over. Yeah. And it seems like, you know, we talked about yesterday, like maybe I would try to join uh, a black or Hispanic gang. But it seems like at yeah. least with the black gang, the black gorilla family, uh, they want to incite a race war. So I'm pretty sure they would not allow me in. Yeah, um, but you could be like the snitch for like for the whites. Yeah, you could snitch on whitey. Yeah, I just like why is there not a gang of whites that isn't not like Nazis? Yeah, that's a good question. You know, like why do they just have it's to go just, to Nazis? It's just it's just a it's just an entire gang of guys who killed their wives. <laughs> it's just like the <laughs> we killed our wife crew. Yeah, I guess it's because it goes to the logical. <laughs> they're extreme. called like the cruise ship. They're, they're called the <laughs> Carnival Cruise Ship Gang or something. <laughs> Carnival Cruise Ship Daves. I yeah. guess it's like if you go to the logical extreme, all those they're all named Scott. Perfect. They're all named Scott. Scott. <laughs> <laughs> the Scott Gang. Yeah. Scott or Carl Langston. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I guess they're all just predicated on their race being the best, so like they kind of have to be Aryan. Yeah. You know. Yeah, I guess. Shit. Yeah. Okay, so two weeks. So what are you doing? Um, so I think probably what I would do is my first day, like, you know, you got to like show them that you're either crazy or whatever. But like, I think what yeah. I would probably do is I would find, I would find a way to rape myself. Like, <laughs> like at, during lunch, <laughs> I would just get like a semi soft dick and just like <laughs> pull my legs behind my head and fuck my own ass. <laughs> And they'd be like, "Damn, let's not mess with him." <laughs> like, we'll we'll rape somebody else. Yeah, yeah, dude. I don't know about that. I think I think they'd be like, "That guy is super soft." Now we yeah. know we can. Rape. <laughs> so, <laughs> would you be doing this while they're all watching? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it was funny in the documentary that I watched. So they interviewed a bunch of different people. They interviewed like Warren G, Chuck D, they uh, Ice T, Busta Rhymes. And they also interview the guy who who made the documentary. And he's just like a white guy named Mark or something. Uh -huh. And he has a line where he's like, he's like, uh, you know, prisoners get raped all the time. So imagine how disgusting it is when an elected official or any or any public figure makes a joke about prison rape. And that in that part, I was like, all right, buddy, why don't you do your job and I'll do mine. OK, yeah, yeah, yeah dude. Yeah. Shut the fuck up. Why don't you shut the fuck up? <laughs> um, but that is a good point where it's like, you know, look, pr like prison prison rape is too. It is a little callous the way we talk about prison rape because it happens and. Yeah, I think happens. it's like one in ten guys get raped, it's which those most, are pretty. Those are pretty good odds. It's the most rape, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it's the like, yeah. Um, I I also think I. And also that's a crazy thing too. I mean, it's easy to be like, oh, I don't give a shit because it's prison. Yeah, but, but it's still a there's man a justice system being raped. Right, right, and it's not like when you get sentenced, like the judge is like, I sentence you to seven years, and he doesn't go, I sentence you to like f have someone fuck your ass. <laughs> That's not part of the deal. That's not supposed to be part of the deal. Like when you when you look at those old images of like guys in like white and black, you know? Yeah. Like there there's no like in Dis Disney movies, Disney movies imply a lot of rape, but there's no implied rape in that. Um yeah, everyone yeah, sometimes. Okay. Um when, when the, the bad guy is like, "Bring the girl to me." Oh, yeah, yeah, you're right. Okay, so the judge is about to sentence you. He goes, yeah. Mike, you can either do like ten years uh -huh. or five years, but you're you're gonna get fucked in the ass. Like what do you what do you yeah. do? I think there's a pretty large I think I I would flip a coin. I don't know. <laughs> you would flip a coin. I'd be like it's in God's hands, whatever <laughs> God wants. I don't fucking know. For a half for half of the wow, well, okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I, I mean, I personally think making a joke about prison rape, like on stage or just in, just in general, like the "Don't Drop the Soap" stuff, I think it's, it's pretty. It's hacky. it's hacky. It's, it's, hacky it's really well. hacky. It's really hacky. And it also yeah. is like, it is really shitty, 
you know? Yeah. But yeah. But yeah, no one And also it's like we don't care about. as society, we don't care. Yeah, no yeah, because we, we think shit. like oh, it's prison, you know, like oh, they must deserve it. Oh, they're a bunch of And it's like we we see prisoners as subhuman. Yeah. So it's like we don't, you know, we've been conditioned to uh to feel that way. Yeah. I mean, you know, some of them are like the devil and then other ones are just trying to survive. Yeah. It yeah. fucking sucks though. And I mean, a lot of like these prisons are also, I mean, just we did an episode on this um it was our hundredth episode with Ian Finance, but it is big. Like prison is big business, and they build estates, and they have to be kept full. Like there's certain contracts with these private companies uh-huh. where they tell the state, they're like, "Listen, you have to keep this at, at least a ninety three percent capacity." So the states have what? literally have an incentive, or else you get billed or something. So so basically, if there's not enough people in prison, taxpayers spend more money to to give to private corporations. And that's what pisses me off when you when you hear like cuz I follow a bunch of boomer Facebook groups and when they go like Why, just so you can yeah, yeah these people yes. But they go these people on welfare. It's like if you had any idea what these fucking corporations were doing with with your supposed tax money, you would you wouldn't give two shits about anybody about fucking food st- you know? Yeah, yeah. No. It no. just makes me sick. No, private corporate, private. I just want boomers. I want to tell my parents that their generation needs to die. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, you know, some people try to name the coronavirus the boomer remover. Great, perfect. But who knows? It seems like it's removing the silent generation more. Yeah, um, I, I don't know. Yeah, man. and that's a that's a bummer. It's killing like the best of us. It's killing old people and bus drivers. Yeah, you know, bus drivers. Yeah, I don't know. I would, sh- yeah. I mean, I'd shave my head. I'd try to get into a gang. I wouldn't snitch. Um, mm-hmm. I would try not to get on the. Because what do they talk about? There's like called the bad list. Well, also you can't snitch. You can't snitch on. You can't snitch to the guards. Like if they say, if you have a problem with somebody, you gotta like work it out with them. Because really? if you get the guards involved, oh yeah, it'll be it'll be bad. What kind of a life makes someone want to become a CEO? You got to have had a, like a really shitty a life. A CEO? No, a CO. A CO? A correctional officer. Um, Deb's sister's ex-boyfriend was a correctional officer, and I guess like, I don't know, I guess it pays okay. Yeah, but like, that's got to be such a shitty job, right? Yeah. Like, it's it's not fun. The Everyone you work with fucking hates you, and some of them yeah, are Yeah, but you make like actively, 60K a year. Some of them are probably actively trying to hurt you. Um, long hours, you're in a prison, but, yeah. but like you're in a prison, you know what I mean? Even though you're mm-hmm. being paid, you have to be in a prison all day and yeah. you have to deal with people like probably being the sh- like you can't trust anyone. Yeah. You just, you probably just turn into an, a- like I would probably turn into an asshole if I was a CEO. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. At yeah. first you try to be nice and you try to be like, stand by me and like help the prisoners and. Like that's not what that movie is, but you know, you try to be like the yeah, the white knight. No, uh, you kind of missed the point of that movie. I think. <laughs> no, but you try to come in and be like, I can change these prisoners, and then after like, you know, five yeah. of them fucking piss on your face, you're like, you know what? Never mind. Yeah. Um, All right. Let me ask you this: how how many people do you think are estimated to be wrongfully convicted that are serving time in jail right now like do you have you have the number uh yeah i i don't know what you're fucking you gotta you gotta stop um talking to the sorry the dog not you yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. if um, you had to guess how many people it's estimated that are wrongfully convicted <laughs> that's, what, that's how mike tried to tried to tell one of his ex-girlfriends when she was giving him like <laughs> the worst hand job ever, <laughs> he's like, "What?" When you were like, "I don't know what you you gotta fucking stop." I don't know what you're doing, <laughs> but he's... yeah, um, I'd say thirteen percent. But what's what's the number? Like, how many people? Oh, um, you sent me an article that said there's like two million people incarcerated. Um, yeah, so we. The United States has more people incarcerated than they do in college. Wait, what? So we have a lot of fucking... We have the highest prison population in the world. It's a lot of people locked up. It's mostly people of color. Um, and 
a lot of people have been wrongfully convicted. The problem is, like, you know, you have a system where um, people are sort of, uh, you know, once someone's put in jail, they don't, they don't. They aren't rushing once you're to get convicted. them out. Yeah. Yeah. They're, there's there's another there's another weird thing too where it's like, like this this fetish this fetishization yeah, of fetishization. Um, prosecutors. Yeah, yeah, we make them out right. to be like because of Law and Order and some of these other things. Yeah. Like some of these yeah. guys are fucking losers. They're herbs. Yeah. Well, there was a guy who was like kind of like one of the main focal points of this documentary, and he was wrongfully convicted of killing his mother. Um, but uh-huh. he met a guy in prison who was like, "Hey, what's up, man? My name's my name's David. I'm a Christian. Like, you know." Yeah, yeah. And and so he he was like, "What are you in for?" And he's like, "Oh, they think that I killed my mother," and then. They use that as a that 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 guy David was like an informant. He worked for a prosecutor. What? And he they they were basically like, oh okay, yeah, that's a confession. And I guess they they use that. They use like jail snitches. This is before his trial. Oh, so that's they use such like, bullshit. It's bullshit. Yeah. So they want to get their record. I mean, they want like a prosecutor wants a high. I mean, you don't want to be a prosecutor with you know a fucking. 60% conviction rate like you want a high conviction rate oh, right yeah. so so when people are like when when fucking old liberals get get hard for fucking you know <laughs> Kamala Harris who was a fucking prosecutor it's like i wonder i don't know i mean criminal justice is like it's fucked yeah it is it is that's it like is a fucking, bullshit yeah i mean also just I mean, even with this McMillions documentary, like the prosecutor on there, Devro, mm-hmm. you were like, "Dude, you're making this like so much of a bigger deal than it is." Like, you yeah. kind of fucking suck. I like, love that you're pro uh, the people rigging the McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> we talked about that last night. I don't know if I'm pro it. You're I like, just dude, think, who like, cares? No, but I dude, really, that's awesome. <laughs> no, I don't know if I'm pro it. I'm just kind of like, damn, the FBI is putting so much fucking. Yeah, time yeah. into this like why don't they put all that time into the getting like releasing wrongfully accused no but that's what they do they the fbi's job is to, like find arab kids and like be like hey i, I want to buy a missile and they're like yeah cool i guess <laughs> i'll just keep it in my room and then they send them to jail for like four, you know the rest of their life years, yeah. and they're like wow we're really keeping the streets safe you know they're like they're like the guy in south park who's dressing up like a prostitute yeah 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 and then arresting people yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I know what you're saying. The 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 cop. Yeah. That's actually so funny. He like fucks. Yeah, yeah. That was a good yeah, episode. Yeah. That show's so good. Um, yeah, man. I. What was interesting about for people listening that that don't know, like there weren't gangs in jail until like the 80s. Oh yeah. And then all of a sudden there was like this big influx, because there were so many people in jail that it just led to all this tension there was a lot like it was a lot more ethnically mixed and Mm -hmm. so all these gangs started to like form in the 80s and what's also crazy is the gangs kind of keep each other in check in Mm -hmm. the jail like Mm -hmm. no one no one wants to fuck with the other gang because if they do they know that that gang is gonna like retaliate like there's no no gangs just go eh whatever like they always Mm -hmm. retaliate you know and also, yeah, yeah. the gangs are related to the gangs on the outside of the of the prison. So, if someone on the outside mm-hmm. of the prison wrongs someone in a rival gang, they yeah. know that if they know that any of their relatives that are in jail are gonna mm-hmm. potentially get fucked up by that rival gang's right, right, right. gang members in um in jail. So it's like this weird yeah, yeah. connected inside outside system, which mm-hmm. is. And also, the reason that I was talking about opening my my asshole up is because <laughs> <laughs> is because is because <laughs> you're just like you're just like in your cell one night, just like reading a book, getting raped. You're just reading the Quran, getting raped, and you don't even feel anything. <laughs> no, it's because see, come on, we can see that's a funny prison when it's you you getting raped is funny because you'll never reading be. The Quran. You're at your fucking mother's. You're at your fucking mother. Your mother killed that cockroach for you. <laughs> Nah, it's still sitting on the She, like, bed, rushed dude. into the... She, like... No, it's still sitting on the bed under this box. I'm gonna fuck it up. Um... Yeah, yeah, I would love some bagel bites right now. Um...
but the th- the fuck was I talking about? Oh, is that the guy in the article was saying you can tell what kind of cell phone the inmates have be- based on what their soap looks like. Like if they have a bar of soap that's really wide and short, they have an old brick phone. But if they have a long thin one then they have an iphone and the reason is because they'll whittle the bar down and then shove that shit up their ass to prepare for the iphone that they're gonna get and that they're gonna have to carry around with all day dude could you imagine just reaching into your ass all day to check your fucking instagram (laughs) yeah dude I mean, every time it buzzed, it would probably feel good on your prostate, but still, dude, like, that's insane. That's what I'm saying. I'm trying to prepare for that shit, you know? And then they have to get cavity searched, like, holy shit, you gotta check the guy's asshole. Yeah, I don't... Yes, no, they whittle the soap down, and they shove it up their ass to... Yes, to prepare their ass for the phone that's inevitably going to have to go up there because the cop, the CEOs can't know that they have it, you know, which is insane. So all those dudes are just walking around basically holding in a big shit all day because it's their phone, you know. Oh, my God, dude. Yeah, I wonder if you have your phone in your ass, if it prevents someone from trying to fuck you. <laughs> the Quran. <laughs> oh, Jesus, don't. Yeah, yeah, nothing, nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, she does. Fuck, I was going to ask you one other thing. Um, God damn it. We're talking about uh, surviving, being in jail, getting, shoving it up your ass. Yeah. Uh, Oh, how many, how many people are wrongfully, do they think? Well, I I said, I said 13%. (laughs) Wow, this is great. Um, um, I said thirteen percent. This, uh, <laughs> uh. <laughs> 250,000 people. No, that's too many. Uh, yeah, because there's 2 million people. I said 10%. Um, 50,000 people? Wow. Holy shit. That's... Okay, so like 5%, anywhere between like one like 2 to 5%. That's that's a lot of people, dude. Man. That that is what would turn me into a real murderer probably is going to jail for something I didn't do and losing all faith in the justice system and the country in general, you know what I mean? At that point you're like, "Fuck it, dude. I'm going to kill the devil." <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> That's going to be you when this all comes over and you're like, "Yeah, I don't know if I don't know if stand up's in me anymore." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're going to be like, "The game ain't in me anymore." <laughs> yeah, you're right. <laughs> a stupid twat. Yeah. <laughs> the game ain't in me anymore. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. And then it ends. Fuck. All right, man. Uh, you guys can find me online at Dylan J. Palladino. Um, and, you know, you'll go there and you'll find my podcast. Check it out. You'll enjoy. I just had Mike on. Give that one a listen. Uh, thanks. Thanks, brother. On the feed. Yeah. And then that one fucking Italian kid freaked out about it. The kid who's... TikTok I posted, he freaked out at me and told and called me fucking racist and homophobic. Cause he's an idiot and nineteen and thinks that you can just say that about someone who isn't doing any of those things. Yeah, he's a dumb wop, dude, and he's given all of us a bad a bad name. No, he was like, You need to credit it, you need to credit me more, you need to put me in the title, you need to put me in I was like, No, dude. You're in the comments. Also, it says your handle in the video. Also, shut the fuck up. And Dude, that's what I'm saying. It's not content. It's just a video from his TikTok. Because everyone thinks their shit is content when in reality he's just using his mom to get followers, which is fucking embarrassing. And his mom's a psychopath and and also a real Italian, you know? I speak from the heart. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> You're fuck, fucking fake Italian. All right, but tell me to turn it off. I want to talk to you on the phone after. All right. See ya.